All right, Rob, you're live. For me, it is. Possible path 
forward, paths forward. Obviously, we need some input and some direction from the board in terms of where we go here. So uh, that's kind of what we wanted to cover, and then what the next steps might be if we can get that direction tonight. Does that cover everything that's on the board tonight? And we could stretch this out to just past 10 o'clock or so, so the North Carolina fans have to suffer for this <laughs> meeting. Uh, get to enjoy the game, that'd be awesome. My wife did have a comment that you're going to Wahoo, which is a basketball town, on the night of the big game. And I said, well, they're all probably going to get home by the time the game starts. <laughs> Come on over. <laughs> okay. So uh, our goal for today is to review the options and set a path for solution. We're pretty straightforward on our end. Hopefully we can achieve that. I'm going to jump up because it's easier for me to point to them, just like any app. Uh, the needs to review it as we understand it from the uh, survey and polling that you guys did a couple of months ago, and just all the groundwork from the facility audit to seeing the existing conditions to talking to uh, Eric that's worked here for quite some time. You've got crowded classrooms at the elementary, middle school, and high school areas. Nobody's favorite. favorite. Uh, it's both the space that's available and the number of students. We'll talk more about that when we talk about capacity numbers here. Uh, HVAC replacements are past due at the middle school and high school campus. We wish the bond would have passed a few years ago to take care of that. This last winter, and maybe the winter before, there were kids wearing coats in classrooms because it was so cold. Nothing you guys don't know, but maybe for the broadcast audience. Uh, there's a desire for a second gym. You're bursting in the seams for physical education and certainly the extra uh, activities and things like that could use the added space as well. Parking and traffic flow, uh, particularly at the middle school, high school campus. Uh, you've got high school drivers on top of parents trying to pick up and drop off, and there's just not enough capacity uh, for parking as well as the flow itself is constrained with your current configuration. Um, I'd say most of these are growing pains that the district is feeling. Some of it is deferred uh, work that a lot of, would have been nice in the past few years ago to take care of, but a lot of it is just growing pains that the district has seen. Uh, career tech ed upgrades, you've got uh, an aging building, uh, plus you have programs that are ready to make the step going forward. So it's both the facility need as well as a program need as we understand it. Is that kind of a good recap for everyone? We're all on the same page. Are we missing anything? I think cafeteria is missing. Um, that's exacerbated with the growth of the middle school and high school campus, uh, but you also just have a really constrained space, uh, basically an extra wide hallway that is your searching your uh, cafeteria area. The kitchen itself seems pretty good. The serving line, uh, it's a fun one, as well as the small space for students. If you think of anything else, we can certainly come back. So to review option A, uh, what we have, look, have looked at is uh, reorienting a new high school addition, uh, replacing the Career Tech Ed Center with a new one, creating a new front door with drop-off, and it wouldn't have to be quite all of the parking that's shown in this diagram, but new parking to help distribute the flow and create new capacity for parking. <coughs> Take care of that extra wide corridor in the cafeteria. Thanks for bringing that up, Renee. And add capacity there. Move the serving line so it can be more of a modern scramble style where kids can go and get the food that they need rather than having to go through the funnel and pick it up in an assembly line type format. Um, right now, your Career Tech Ed Center is used as a bus bar and also it's kind of the height of it. It's not comfortable for either use because they're trying to use both at the same time. So that could necessitate uh, a new bus barn and yard. As we look at the parking solution, uh, and, uh, likely displace the practice field. Um, that's kind of the new side. And then there's the deferred maintenance of getting into most of the middle school and high school campus with uh, HVAC upgrades or indoor air quality, as we like to call it. Uh, and then the elementary school is kind of at that benchmark, too. Eric, do you want to talk a little bit more in depth about those? Yeah, so the Upgrades for the elementary are relatively simple. Um, there's a there's a peak cooling issue that's that's um, not that hard to, to take care of. Um, so added capacity and then controls. There's um, the controls upgrade that's needed to, to bring all the classrooms back into um, functionality. 
on the high school side, it's, it's much more significant. Um, a lot of the systems are past their useful life. There's no way to really communicate. There's no real modern billing management system. Um, and, and they're basically in failing condition across the majority of high school. Plenty of parking distributed throughout the site. Um, just understanding what Clayton was mentioning about parent drop-off, bus, bus drop-off, pick-up, student parking, uh, teacher, you know, the services um, towards the north end need to be considered. So just to rectify some of the circulation issues around the site as well. So part of what we're considering going forward, uh, because the need is always greater than the budget, is maybe we draw a line, much like you see here, and say this is HVAC and or air quality only. We had previously shown a number of uh, renovations within that, but that still would allow for the cafeteria expansion, the servery to swing. If you remember, we were taking you know, what was about 60% of the existing CTE structure, renovating it, and then uh, taking the other portion of that out for a new gym box size to be determined and then replacing the uh, high school, or, or building new high school campus attached so that all of the common resources in the center are still shared between middle school and high school. We're trying to be efficient and prudent, but still the bottom line number was larger than what uh, the funding available was. So uh, looking at this a little bit more diligently and getting into some of the capacity that we're gonna look at in a little bit, High school campus uh, would add about 16 court classrooms, and they would be right sized classrooms for contemporary high school design. <clears throat> right now, your high school and middle school classrooms are about 10 to 12 percent smaller than what current design standards are. So, you're not going to get a full 25 kids or more in your current classrooms, so your capacity is limited there in one respect. 16 at an average 900 square foot would give you 400 students in terms of ability to grow within uh, those boxes of 16 classrooms on this side. So a little bit of new information we hadn't presented before, but it'll become even more relevant as we look at the projections here. Um, I think you had asked previously, Renee, about the gym cost options. And uh, we'll get into more of the costs later, but this option as we're showing it is about a five and a half million dollar addition, if you did one court only, uh, this would have two cross courts in it. If you did one court only with just enough room so that the kids can run past the court boundaries with a little bit of safety buffer there, but no bleachers, or any of those types of spaces, it'd be uh, just over $2 million in savings, or 3.4 for that number. So we'll have more comparisons like that to go forward, but I wanted to go back to that question that you asked. Please, the 5-5 furnish, I mean, does that or is that just the structure itself? Uh, I believe that's just the structure itself. I don't need to verify yeah, it. It had bleachers. It did have bleachers in it. But the bleachers, the scoreboard, all of those things that turns it into a true competition gym, round numbers of about half a, million, half a million dollars. On top of this? Yes. Or included mm -hmm. with the included. Excuse me, included. Mm -hmm. So uh, just the gym itself would be about five million and then another half a million for the equipment. Then we're using super round numbers, obviously. So that would be kind of our first step to take path forward is think about it. indoor air quality only, a lot less surgical innovation <coughs> east of the red line. And those areas were really being touched uh, lightly and not at all in the path, correct? Yeah, the indoor air quality portion, it would really be reactive to what Eric is doing in the mechanical system. Yeah, go ahead and jump yeah, into that. The scope area is actually, it's really just this area. Yeah, so this, this has an existing system, it's fine. These are in good shape. One of them needs repair over here, but that's just a simple repair. And this is all different systems, so it's mostly that, those stories. What, what this also means is the some of the items that we presented at the last meeting, the secure entry, widening the corridors, um, removing the, the restrooms and the, around the gym, your current gym, uh, those would all go by the wayside. You would not be part of that. It's purely indoor air quality. It's on the top of that. That's like 
talk to Sherman about this. It's not only going to be upgrading the mechanical. I mean, a lot of this work is ceiling work, so we're probably going to have to replace quite a bit of the ceilings to accommodate these new uh, mechanical upgrades. And this price reflects that. Just estimate. Yeah, it'd be close. How about lights? Lights, I'm not sure on it. I have to double check that. Again, we're using super round numbers. I think once we have a path forward, we can dive in a lot more detail on that path. But we're trying to get to that path forward and help you out. Let's go to the next. So option Z, and uh, most of us were blind to this option because one of the, most of the funding streams you were looking at would not have allowed this. Uh, you switched to a funding stream that now does allow that. So uh, if you want to go ahead, this option is to start to plan your tow into the future and think about a new middle school campus um, that could have an umbilical connection back to the middle school, high school campus. But that would be uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 80 to 90,000 square feet at uh, a full build out, which could be done over years. Uh, about 58,000 square foot of classrooms. And then, depending on what size of gym, uh, practice gym versus a district size competition gym, uh, the, those sizes vary greatly from, say, 25 to 30,000 square feet down to about 10,000 square feet. So, Quite a big delta in terms of cost there too. Um, most middle schools would probably have a couple of rows of bleachers, but not the same the locker configurations, coaches configurations, all of those things that a district competition gym would have, obviously. So a lot of variability in that. <clears throat> we could pull back quite a bit on the parking because middle school uh, you have a few visitors, but you mostly have staff and drop off. And being a consolidated campus like this. Kids can get to other parts of the campus where brothers and sisters are being picked up as well pretty easily. Especially if we have uh, kind of a gerbil run or a biblical connection back to the existing middle school, high school campus. And you can see we're not much further away even from the elementary campus as we look at this sketch and diagram. Now, it's a very early sketch. We need to make sure that it would work, but it seemed like the next logical place to start looking if we were to go down this road still potentially look at relocating the practice field and building the bus barn. Uh, this would transition the existing career tech ed space using the shell, the structural shell as it is, but upgrading everything inside. And it would still take care of the cafeteria need. Uh, whether the, the kitchen would be duplicated in the new middle school campus would be a question. Whether it's full serve, whether it's full prep or serving would be a question. A lot of details we would need to work out if we go down this road. But uh, that was the big picture concept. Uh, what that does is really separate the middle school from the high school. Uh, fifth grade means to come out of the elementary campus to free up room for growth there. So you're probably looking at a five through eight middle school, four grade levels at a time. That could be debated though. Uh, gym size debate again. Improved circulation, and again, we're planning on a full complement of 16 core classrooms, which adds up to about 400 students overall in this solution also. Uh, like I said, still expanding the servery there. Um, it would be a two-story classroom addition to fit in this space. If it was all one story, you have to start looking at another way run out of sight pretty fast. So with the amount of land you have, it makes sense to go up in the middle schools, three stories is even no problem at all. Um, we've already covered all of the other items, so. I think so. Yeah, just to really clarify that it is a two-story, and they set the site development cost. We, there's a lot of grade in that part of the site. So having a smaller footprint, right, really utilizing the double story for classrooms. But understanding that the gym is going to be one of the larger pieces of program that fit on the site, how do we start to nestle that in, work with the grading to balance the site if we possibly can? Um, but that's, again, for further study down the line if this is something that is pursued. Any questions on this? Okay. The next 
thing is a little bit of the capacity analysis that we looked at. So, working with Brandon, we got your current uh, enrollment capacity and looked at different projection factors. I think uh, percent and a half is the uh, historic growth here. You see that year over year in most cases. Certain districts more towards the metro are seeing a greater rate of growth over the matter of minute. But um, you're starting at 1,055, not including, or 1050, uh, not including preschool. Um, and then you can see pretty clearly uh, this is your elementary band in blue, the middle school band in red, and then high school band in yellow, staying pretty consistent over time there. You change grade configurations, you change the area of color, but your overall total pretty much stays the same as we understand it going forward here. Um, we also put in here what your current design capacity is. And I've discounted that design capacity a little bit based on the small classrooms in this building, but I think you're feeling the pinch even beyond what I put in there as a reduction factor, which is due to the efficiencies of having so many kids in one place here. Yeah, here I said 88% is the square foot difference between the 900 standard classroom and what you generally have across the board in this building. Curve changes quite a bit if you look at 3% growth. Uh, same information out to the red. But then what the question here on both of these slides is, is what are those trigger points as we think about today in, in terms of deciding potentially between option A and option B? And what does that mean for you in your next step in terms of the next trigger? I think you're in the size of district and you're in the location geographically where you need to be thinking about that next 5, 10, maybe even 15 years down the road in terms of what you're planning for, for kids that are going to show up, and then how financially the facilities can match that as I think about your decision making that you can do in terms of these two decisions. split the difference just because maybe 3% is a little aggressive, even though know, that's what uh, Elkhorn is seeing. 1% might continue for a few years, and then you go through a few years where it's 2.5%. Maybe in 20 years you're at the point where you're, you're gaining 850 students, but in the interim you're probably somewhere at the five-year mark around 124, 10 years around 263, 15 years might be that 400 student loan. So we were talking about the 16 classrooms that we've been sketching out in the house. So, 3% uh, tells you they're going to be here in 10 years. If your crystal ball is better than me, tell me what the future is going to hold. It'll be a lot easier for all of us to play out. But uh, this hopefully helps lend a little bit of insight into what maybe some realistic projections might look like for you. Anything you want to add here? Well, I think a couple things. If you go back a slide real quick, Matt. Uh, when you look at elementary, what it's designed for versus what actual is, we just included the K-5 piece in there because that is that is the, the grade levels that have the opportunity to expand. That Head Start is capped. We don't go beyond a certain number, so that's why I kind of separated it into K-12 instead of including the K-12 in there. So that number looks a little different than we share in September. Go to that next slide. You have in pre -K. How but many kids in pre-K right now? Capped at 40, correct? For pre-K. So if you add those in, we are essentially at capacity. When you figured capacity, did you figure it on the preschool classrooms as well? I did not include the preschool, but I did include specialized ed, which is another thing I didn't mention because that changes your capacity when you think about the programs and those rooms. Yeah. They look like classrooms, but they're not. Correct. So, so what, he's, what he's talking about there is with special ed, you have bite-sized classrooms, but you're really serving small groups or individuals at one time. So what might be programmed for 20 or 25 students, you're cutting that in half or a fourth that it can be used at a given time. Uh, the other things I'd point out, that percent and a half growth, that's pretty consistent over the last 20 years um, at any point in time. Uh, obviously, we get one-year variations, but if you, if you look at a group of years, percent and a half is pretty darn close. Uh, looking at some of the developments that are going on or that we'll have going on in the near future, I think a percent and a half is a best case scenario as far as how do we extend this out the longest. If 
we see any growth ahead of a percent and a half, it's just going to shorten that timeline with the number of new students that we're bringing. Does that make sense? So a, per, a percent and a half for our planning purposes, given everything that we're trying to accomplish, is a best case scenario. Anything faster than that really puts us in a bind. I think your bubbles now might be kindergarten. Kindergarten six, eight, and eleven. Six, eight, and eleven. Yeah. Kindergarten is over 90 now. They should really have five classrooms, and we don't have the space for five classrooms. Grades 6, 8, and 11 are 88 plus students, is what I consider a little bit of a bubble. The other thing that I would share is as I track back, oh, I don't remember, back in the class of 2010, maybe, every, every group that came in as kindergartners, they graduated with a higher student enrollment. We never saw a group that dropped in student enrollment. So if we're starting to see classes that come in at 80 and 90 in kindergarten, there's a really good chance that they're going to graduate over 100 students. So we will continue to see that. I, I certainly will continue to see that growth. Other questions on that? Well, the, the one, and a half, one and a half percent growth has been what we've talked about, kind of the standard for how many years? 20? Yep. Over the last 20 years, how many how many housing developments has Wahoo seen? Two? Five? I guess ten? Heritage Heights. That's up here. Lake. Lake the lake. Yeah. And probably the country club across the way. Three. Probably four. That's eight four. That's why I say that's a best case scenario yep. for long term. Yep. Yep. Best case meaning the most conservative. Best case meaning this is how we can draw it out the longest <clears throat> as far as a solution. Yeah. Any faster growth in that solution time will be short as the shortens. When you look at the difference, even of a percent and a half, we're going from a percent and a half to a quarter in 15 years. asking which makes A or B give us the most longevity? Is that is that what we're well, after? I mean, it might be that's going to be part of the conversation. Because we can talk about the growth, but we only have this amount of money. Right. So that, that, I guess I just want to make sure we're looking at the three. Does it really matter? I mean, what, what what's determining if we do anything different with the growth? What, what's what's changing? You just showed the sixteen classrooms. Well, no, I, I'm, I'm saying yeah, is option A, or are we talking about option A and B? Is, it, is this why we're looking at this different? I mean, so in my mind, uh, if we start pairing something back, because something's got to give, because to your point, there's only so much money, and right now there's more okay. solution than there is money to fund it. So something's got to give. I don't know if the classrooms is something that should give, if the gym is something that should give, if, if I'm trying to say, here's some more objective information to think about in relation to what are we going to have to give to get to the goal? That's, that's where I'm coming from. Oh, I, that makes sense. What, going back to the two options, um, if I recall, on each of them you said roughly 16 additional classrooms, program for 25 kids in classrooms and 400 students. Is that correct? Right. <coughs> what, what is the What, what would be the big difference in terms of what we would get to accommodate future growth between option A and option B? And I guess, could I tag on to that? Because that's what I was wondering, like with option B, I hadn't seen that obviously laid out before. Like, you know, we had talked, you know, in, in options, you know, maybe down the road you could do a freestanding building over on that or west corner. Yeah. You know, so if, if you're looking at option B, is that maxing out that area, that capacity there, so no matter what you do, you have to look at a diff different location, or you could build on from there if you needed to, 
like what's the expansion opportunity for option B versus option A? Option A seems to be maxed out for tagging on, but. Yeah, I think you could keep adding on and keep adding on and keep adding on to option A, but at a certain point, the core amenities in that building, much like the cafeteria is today, are just going to be stretched too thin. And the building itself just isn't going to be able to support more classrooms after more classrooms. Option B starts to allow a little bit more, maybe only build half the classrooms, maybe it's half that size of the gym, I don't know what that right solution is, but then you can add more classrooms on in the future. Another gym when the population grows to the point where you really need another competition gym, per se, or another practice gym, whatever that solution is. And with an umbilical connection, you can still get back to some of those core amenities in this building itself. So, yeah, both of them allow you to utilize some of the existing spaces you have here. This one is in the middle school, starts to duplicate, which is one of the next slides that people get to if you want to go ahead. But uh, if you build a new middle school, you're duplicating the library, you're duplicating art, you're duplicating, at least to a certain extent, specialized education. Maybe the vocal or band room gets duplicated, or maybe they travel back. That's the level of decisions we need to talk about if we're going that way. If it's got that kind of drill run umbilical, maybe some of that can be deferred, and it's part of the PD program with the kids back and forth. But now you're giving up time in the academic too, because if just this distance is about 125 feet, and if they have to go another two to 300 feet to get to the library, we're giving up time in the day, and who knows what those kids are doing along the way. I know what I was doing at that age. Um, so that's part of the give and take here that we need to have you guys think through in terms of finding a solution. Just trying to think about those things, what's going to give to get us to a solution here. Sense. Does that answer both your questions? Yeah, I guess in my mind I was thinking, and I don't know if this is true, but I was thinking that with the, the option B, we were considering adding quite a bit more additional square footage than we were with option A. Uh, I'd have to do a double check on the square footage. My, my, so, just my off the top of my head recollection, and I could be way wrong on this, but I thought on option A we were talking about adding 55,000 square feet of new space. And option B, we were somewhere in the neighborhood of 80 to 90,000 square feet. So I'm a little lost on how we're only getting 16 classrooms on each of those. And I don't, I'm not trying to get down in the weeds, but I just, yeah. I mean, that significant of a difference, well, assuming big. that the gym yeah, that's is just roughly the same, regardless of which yeah. building you attach it to. I'm trying to understand where the big disconnect is there. And we'll get to some of the numbers, but uh, you're right, it's about 56,000 square feet in the high school in option A. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, the boxes that we've drawn are just shy of 90,000 square feet on the middle school. We know that's both <coughs> too big for the budget that we have to spend. Right. 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 I think part of that, I can't account for all of it, but part of it, just off the top of my head, is purposing with 60% of, or taking a piece of CTE out versus keeping it where it is. So on, on one of them, you're keeping CTE as is and you're adding space. The other one, you're cutting a portion of it out, keeping apart, and then building new with the other. Yeah, and but I, that's I, only a small portion. Only a small portion. But you're talking about where the money's going. I'm talking about where the square footage is going. Because if you're getting 55,000 square feet of new space versus 90,000 square feet of new space, it seems like there's just a lot more space to be able to do something with. But if you're only getting 16 classrooms in each, where is that? And maybe it's... It's the, I think, where is the difference? Yeah. It's the duplication of spaces. Cafeteria, cafeteria, kitchen, art, administration. There's, there's gonna, I think there's going to be some of that program that just needs to be centrally located. The umbilical connection, that, that connection piece, we can try to maximize not doing the duplication, but I think you'll want some core services, mechanical rooms. I mean, spaces for, for Eric usually, you know, a good, a good chunk, but that's a necessity that we can't just tie over to these. You know, speaking of uh, so, mechanical, with a, a separate middle school, it's two mechanical plants, two electrical services. Correct, yeah, that, that's yeah. the most logical. Yeah, it's separate. 
option A, it's one. So does that help? This shows the full blown. We weren't thinking all of that for the budget and per our last yeah. conversations. Yeah, we can pare down a lot of the site uh, parking uh, to what's needed and what the budget can support. So that was part of the last meeting. Um, how can we pull that back and just do what's needed, but leave room for expansion of parking? Perfect. What is the uh, cost of the information for you? A study a week ago, I believe, Jay. Basically, compared uh, three different schools of similar, similar to what we think water is going to be, and in today's cost, it's basically running about 340 bucks a square foot. So we took those three schools. If they were older schools, we put an escalation onto it to get it to today's value. And basically did an average of those three schools. At today's cost, is $340 a square foot for a new school. On top of that, the escalation we're seeing today is roughly 9% a year. It used to run 3% for years and years, but what we're seeing today is about 9%. So divide that out by 12 months, you're looking at about three quarters of a percent per month, that escalation is going to keep growing. That's something we wanted to bring to your guys' attention because every month that we let slide here, we're adding another $250,000 into the cost of what it's going to take to build this, taking away some of your program. And that's obviously a projection based on the current market, but that it is what we're seeing. There's no tell, I mean, that could could drop back down, but we're projecting right now that it's still going to be in that six to nine percent over the next year. I was in the webinar last week with economists from the American Institute of Architects and Association of General Contractors. They were both saying that uh, historically, when inflation hits a peak, we're not sure we've hit the peak yet in this market. It takes a minimum of two years to get back to quote unquote normal, but the numbers never, the cost per square foot numbers never go back to what you saw before. That's just the level of out of the inflation. So it's probably here for just stay for a while. Yeah, it's, it's slowing the growth rate. Yeah. It's my other <clears throat> big question on all of this is just from in your impression, professional opinions, the the How wise is it to add a $30 million addition to a 45 year old building and you end up paying for it to be 65 years old? If money's no object? <laughs> well, I get money's an object, but I mean, the reality is we're in a building, I mean, we call this the new high school, and the first graduating class was 45 years ago this May. And I mean, is it is it logical <clears throat> to add a $30 million? addition, 30 some million dollars, I'm not counting the upgrades to the HVAC, but a 30 some million dollar addition to a 45 year old building. You know, we restored uh, buildings like the original Lincoln High and Lincoln that go well past 100 years. I think the bones here are good. You're still going to have to replace HVAC systems and all of that. Uh, we're not going to change the classroom sizes. We can maybe have some more versatility between them. Those are good questions to ask. And I think that's probably it more than anything. And I'm not in no way, shape, or form I'm suggesting that we're nearing the end of this useful life of this building or anything like that. But if money was no object, what are the other things that we were doing here to right size it, or not right size it, but to make it more compatible with the way education is lined up today? Yeah, if you were starting over, it's certainly a much more flexible building, a lot larger spaces that you could do more inside with. Mm -hmm. It would be a lot easier next time the HVAC renovation comes along to get in and do that work. Um, that's the nature of having 45-year-old building. Yeah, improvements to indoor air quality, acoustics, 
course, a lot of the things that we had been looking at previously with this building, uh, the middle school, I think you mentioned it last time, Cynthia, the middle school classroom sizes are appropriate for middle school students, not necessarily high school students. It's just how can we make those classrooms better for today's living environment. Technology or quality uh, acoustics, giving you additional flexibility. So there's a lot of cases, a lot of projects we've done where we modify existing structures to make it better for them. Well, I think that begs the question, if you build a new middle school, the upstairs needs to be appropriate for high school classes now. And so, and there have to be some dollars to renovate these 45-year-old spaces. I don't think we can just simply say, let's build as much square footage as we can in a middle school and ignore the fact that we have a 45-year-old building here that needs some upgrades or redesign to accommodate it becoming a high school space. Which under either well, no, I guess under the under option A, it would become a high school right. space, it would become a middle school space. Right. Upstairs and down. Yeah, I want to hear what do you guys think? Um, How does it take my CFD and how for a minute and say if I was sitting on Bottom side of the table. My question being kind of what we were, were discussing a little bit earlier was what option provides me the most flexibility for the unknown? For, said, for the unknown. As we said, the most conservative approach, you know, we say that we stay at the, the 1.25% growth rate, but we don't know. You know, you might see an influx of positive problems. You may not, but I would want to look at what space gave me the most options for the future of the unknown. I want to maximize the dollars that I have today, use it in an appropriate way. But I want to know too that if something changes, you know, for the good, for the growth, that I've got options now. And so that's the question that I ask is which of these options is which of these two options is going to give me the most options for adapting to the future. You know, I think because I know we call it a gerbil tube and all that. I think there's some creative things, and you guys certainly say, hey, how to make that usable space as opposed to just a tube. You know, there's lots of things we can do for little learning commons and stuff like that. And it's not just a tube. <clears throat> but what that, I would say, you know, we are limited on land. We've got some challenging grades here. But if I look at those two, which do I know that, hey, we make, we're making decisions today based on what we know. Let me flex in the future for what we can do. That, that, that would probably be the question I want to answer the most. Let's maybe pause on that in just a minute because I think we'll come back to it quickly. If you want to have forward slides, just a little bit more information. I think we've already covered here. I just want to really underscore the duplicates existing spaces. We can pull back on some of that depending on the connector, whatever it is. Upgrades, lighting upgrades, that's a guy to do of about 6.6 .6 million. So that investment just needs to be made. I think we can all agree on that. Uh, option A, we're playing with numbers as the market is changing on us, but we believe high school addition remodel, this is the light version of remodel, not what we showed the last time we were here, what we talked through before. It includes CTE and cafeteria, about 38 million. Including that 6.6. Option B, the new middle school, about 29 million. So you can see the difference between the two baseline uh, classroom pieces there. Then you have the CTE replacement in there at 4 million. Put another 5 million into site work. Neither of these solves the bus bar cost equation yet. You just haven't studied that enough to be able to say we think it's half a million dollars, a million dollars, whatever that number is. I would guess it's somewhere in that range, but other things, you know, if you've got better info on that, maybe it's even dangerous to put those numbers out there. We'll have more on actual size or, yeah, it'd be kind of dangerous to throw something out there. Yeah. I'm just saying it's not covered yet. You know. You're going to need furniture, you're going to need equipment, uh, CTE, depending on how.
how robust that becomes could be a lot of equipment and a lot of cost. Probably covered in this range. You could probably get by with the low end of the furniture range there, but you want to invest in furniture that's conducive to education too. And the design fees, we'd like to get paid for what we do, and we've agreed to the percentage, and that's essentially what that number is. Take these things out of this number, this is the net ball we're shooting for. We're not there yet on either of these options. We're within striking distance on option A. I feel like we can get to work and get there <coughs> pretty easily. We got some work to do on option B if that's the way to go. Now back to the question of what sets UFS for the future. What's the future? 15, 20 years is more of a percent and a half growth. I think you're probably okay with the high school option if it's going to be accelerated, you probably want to put a toe into the future and push towards the middle school option, in my opinion. But I think either one of those options, you're going to max out your current campus capacity for future buildings in the next 10 to 15 years as these options become fulfilled as a master plan. We can only afford eight classrooms in phase A, but you build out another four in five years and another four in three years after that, for example your parking, your activities, all of those things are going to max this campus out. And Wahoo's probably going to grow, that you're going to be looking at another attendance center someplace else also, is my guess. Does that all make sense? Yeah, the option A, <coughs> that 37 million, oh, that does include, I'm sorry, that does include the, the HVAC. I think the, the one thing is is that the, the actual middle school, high school HVAC improvements wouldn't be the same for both options because under option A you're actually part renovating about 20,000 square foot that would be have to be HVAC renovated if you went to option A on the west side. So what does that mean, Eric? Meaning the number should be a little bit more for option B or less for option A depending on how you guys have the price. I, I want to say it's about 70,000 square foot of HVAC upgrade versus 50,000 square foot. Put more stress on the 6 6 yeah. 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 Six, six, six. shrink or grow depending on how these options flush out. Okay, but the numbers you got to put in there. It's a million dollar number. Option B, we have more work to do. So we might lay out another 284000 for next month to option A and B because we won't make it because option B has work to do, right? Option A is ready. We've, yeah. We've studied option A pretty extensively and I think we have past work even last year. Uh, but how to do this stuff could probably be launched in six to eight weeks. Yeah, the procurement side of that would we'll work out. Launch something and then think it's going down a certain path, and then nope, we're changing to go a different way, that's going to cost you even more money. And then, specifically, Rob, to, to your question on you know, what, what's, what are you left with? This building itself is going to have a new electrical service, going to have a new domestic water service, going to have a new, you know, all of the all of the heart of the infrastructure will be replaced under it. So, it's, it's really a question of structure, right? The masonry structure, the windows, those are those things. Not, not, not discounting the fact that the classrooms themselves aren't optimal for learning environment, but physical structure-wise. So just to clarify, does that mean you have a design for option A or something close to a design? Because it feels like we continue meeting after meeting to talk in about the 30,000 foot level. Um, and, you know, as Mike rightfully points out, we changed our finance their financing mechanism in December, and here we are in April. We're still talking at the 30,000 foot level. By the math they gave, $250,000 a month, that cost us a million dollars. We really need to get now to seeing design and numbers so we can decide what size the gym should be and, and all of these things. It just feels like we are still at such a conceptual kind of level, um, we got to get some good information to start making some decisions. And, and I, I don't know, maybe you guys see something I don't see here, but I don't feel like I have information to 
to make good decisions yet. Um, well, let me let me address at least what my view on that comment would be. Yes. Number one, we were negotiating the contract. We don't have a contract in place for them to design yet. I don't think we've signed anything, and to expect them to design without a contract, I think, is unfair. Agreed. Um, so, and I think the other part that we paused on is, do we want to look at this option B? And as much as I would probably prefer to go that way, because I think it gives us more flexibility for the future. I look at the numbers and assuming that we're at least close, I don't know that we can get there. And I would probably lean back towards option A as much as it probably isn't my favorite. But then I'd say we approve the contract, we get the thing signed, and they got to get designing. But I, I feel like the whole, at least right now, was to, to review option A and option B and to get the contract negotiation process in place. So that's my perspective. You guys can say what you want, but I want to defend a little bit from my perspective okay, on that. And I don't think it's about defending that. I, I just, and maybe I misunderstood you. You said you got six weeks out on option A, and maybe I didn't understand uh, what was six weeks out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just you're talking just about this we here. I believe that's some of that was six, exactly. it's six to eight weeks we get we can get equipment. Right, right. I mean, that's okay. our problem. But that's yes. really, that design's not going to help you that much because. So we're not You're six out. to eight weeks from having an option A, something close to design. Right, right. You're just yeah. saying on the age back. Whether it's this yeah. or this, uh, we're, we're kind of in a chicken and egg conversation here. We kind of need to know, okay, yep, that's it or that's it. And then we can get under contract, thank you, uh, and we can get to that next level of design. But we, just like you, want to feel like we're shooting for a realistic target rather than uh, we're up to 50 motion with this number months ago. We can't start designing a $50 million project when we know you don't have the funds for that project. Cleveland, so. how long does design take generally? Like, to, to truly in earnest get going on construction? What, what does that look like? Um, well, I think it, it, if we started, if we said, okay, well, option A is going to move forward, be able to put together a bid set for MCL, it's likely going to take us about six months to do that. Um, with the size of this project, obviously there's there's some packages that we can break out early as far as getting the site ready. Especially uh, where Sherman's already got the most mechanical four option A, we can get that started later right. and, and knock off quite a bit of uh, inflation for that part. Or a couple of procurement timelines for construction. Yeah, absolutely. To have the building envelope, to have the entire um, option A high school edition formalized into the documents, it'll, it'll take uh, probably six months around. There. But within the six months, we're just not waiting six months. You guys are starting. We're locking prices. Right yeah, we're locking prices. So price would be locked in if we approve A to dine, right? If we approve A packages to, to, to MCL so they can start bidding and getting those. Okay, that's not okay. okay. so, so once we get the package, the design ready, then we can lock it. The correct answer. The large asterisk to that, though, is that the square footage has to be set. Right. Because we're at, we're going at risk locking in electrical here. Yeah. We are further along than you know meeting slideshow. We have we model things in Revit, which uh, is our drawing program that we use. Um, Working to that, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. 
think overlaying the schedule and the design along with bidding procurement with the your school calendar. Um, and obviously, we'll, we'll have to review, have review meetings, review the design with everyone having, uh, making sure we're moving in the right direction. So that becomes a part of our process. Um, and obviously, with the more meetings we have like that, the longer that timeline can get stretched out. It's just there's a lot of ramp up for that effort. So the moment we have a decision, that sets our schedule. Do you have more information to present? That was it. I guess from to me tonight I thought okay we need to be strategic in what we decide and looking at both options and kind of the things that we've discussed today both near term and long term it seems like with both options we still have an opportunity to pivot down the road one is the Fox in more, I mean significantly more so than the other and I think if as from a design perspective and cost perspective just looking at Smart path forward. A seems like we can still do it, and then we can pivot down the road. Still be able to do it, but we're working within our means. And then how would we do that? Like if we were to do a scandal building thing on the north west side, like you know, we still have options to within our campus. Let's like, talk about that. Let's go back to A. Yeah. 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 Go back to A, please. Yeah. Guys. Saying you could still come back and add here or here down the road. Yeah. Yep. How much uh, site work does the five million buy us? Just out of curiosity, on the numbers you were showing, you had about five million per site work. What does that get us in terms of parking on these graphs? Do you know? I think what where we left the last meeting, we would have uh, some staff parking expansion at the door. Uh, we would have a little bit on the south, but then basically cut this larger parking area down. We still need to fine tune what that means, but I think we, I think we got rid of this part of that. Yeah. We got rid of this parking, but we kept this little strip in here to add exactly. on. And then we went like half of this one. Yeah. Thanks, thanks Trevor. And, and so, that's in the five. So it's taking each area that that's needs that parking and just putting it where it's needed. And then of course site grading, getting red pad ready for um, underground utilities, getting ready for the new building to look I think a future pivot too that you need to think of um, you know, imaginatively is your current classroom space in this high school. So let's say eventually you are building a middle school um, on you know another part of the site um, that could be completely renovated and be um, you know it could be straight up classroom space it could be um, more career exploratory space you know with um, all, all kinds of different things so that, that would be another opportunity within this building um, if, if you had the high school and then added more middle school space it, you know there are all kinds of things that could be done there um, The difference on the two percent and a half to three percent, call it two and a quarter percent growth, 15 years is 400 kids essentially. So, this would get you 15 years down the line easily. And your cores or your specialized spaces being close in here, you could have a few more classrooms here and increase your capacity and still rely on the central spaces, I think, to a certain extent to get that next five years or so out of it. It's are you going to pace that growth or? More or less. We would, it's more fun for us to decide new, but I think this may be more prudent with where we are today. We do think you can handle just so I get that right. If by two, you can handle the 2.25% growth with this structure, maybe you need another way to know down the road, but if this could, this could handle that. Yeah, it does. I think it would be the growth beyond 400. Well, I think one of the things you have to consider, though, it's not showing up in this order to come to 400 more kids. Is if we could dictate what grades are in, that'd be awesome. But some of them are going to be down to elementary in, in K-4, and we're only clearing out four classrooms. And we've got five grade levels down there. With kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth. 
we don't even have one classroom expansion for every grade level. So we got it. Mean, we'd have to do something in the interim when that to, to accommodate that either at the elementary school or up, you know, just outside over here on the north side to accommodate a fourth grade up here to get more work down there. The alternative you could consider is when we, when we get to that point, moving Head Start to another location for the short term. Right. That'd be the only alternative to that. What is that? Two classrooms? Yeah. Two classrooms and a sped space though too. Right. Just to get to one classroom per grade level. Right. I, I just, that has got me all along. I just think we are absolutely short-sighted if we don't consider at least one classroom growth in every grade level. In 20 years, we went from half-day kindergarten and two classrooms in every grade level to now four in every grade level, including all-day kindergarten and four classes. To think that that's not going to continue, I think, would be to bury our head in the sand. Well, Rob, to your point, we, I guess I didn't see a significant difference. 16 classrooms in option A, 16 classrooms right. in option B. That was my question. So I, we I, get to the same spot. I would have assumed with, with 25,000 more square feet that we would have had more classrooms in that. I'm not, that whole duplication of services still isn't connecting with completely because if we move out of the high school, we clear out some administrative space, or out of the middle school, excuse me, we clear out some administrative space. We don't necessarily need to expand the cafeteria as much, at least not right away. Granted, I think those classrooms are horribly placed in there. They don't make a lot of sense. But we wouldn't necessarily need more classroom space if we're clearing out 250 kids out of the building right now. Eventually we would, but today we wouldn't if we're creating another cafeteria in another place. So I, I don't know. I, that's still, I'm not, I'm not discounting anything any of you are saying. I just haven't been able to connect it all in my mind. But looking at the numbers, it appears to lean hard towards option A right now. I don't know that we can cut enough out of option B other than just slicing a whole wing off you know, for future expansion, which isn't unheard of. I mean, we did that at the elementary school and we built it. We, we made connection plans for future expansion. But I, Mike, oh, go ahead, sorry. No, uh, My concern with option A right now, just as we look at it, is we, we can't add, it doesn't appear that we can add any classroom space onto that, unless I'm missing. I think you could. I think just like option B, it keeps kind of growing this way. We could reconfigure this and keep thinking about expanding here under option A, which basically basically builds into option B. So it's there, okay. but it's okay. not as straightforward as. Thank you. As could as I, I couldn't see past the the drive there that you could actually <laughs> reuse that. Space. Just that alone, Alex. I think we want to study that when we get into schematic design where the classrooms are actually placed, where the new entry is, to allow that, that natural expansion of classrooms in the future. So right now, there, we, we've got, we have general locations and adjacencies, but that needs to be closely studied as part of that next step. Would we have the option to continue going up beyond two stories, or are we maxed out at two stories? You can easily do three stories in an educational occupancy. But uh, it's very rare that you build a superstructure on day one for an addition that may show up in 10 or 15 years. There's clearly a cost premium to be had. Could you 10 or 15 years down the road? Add, add a story. Yeah. You would have to add that superstructure today right? okay. to be able to support it. Yeah. We, would, we would need to design three stories for that building. Yeah. And we'd also have to build it during the summer because we couldn't fly things over the top of your existing school a lot of the time. That's true. Okay, so we gotta go out, not up. Point taken. Sorry, Alex. Although I like us flying things over, I think. You don't have to do a helicopter. Yeah. Just swinging it with the crane, though. Yeah. We can physically get 
cannot swing something over an occupied school, which is not safe at all. I think the last piece of this for the board to consider, not necessarily option A, option B, but the importance of strategic plan and getting ahead of stuff. Once you guys kind of have this whole thing ironed out, I think we have to immediately start planning, at least skeleton planning, what is next, how do we accommodate, constantly looking at student growth, do we see the trends, is it faster, is it slower? I, I don't think this conversation ever stops past this point. Otherwise, we get in the position we are today where we have a finite amount of funds and really an infinite amount of needs. And we, can, we have to continue to look forward on some sort of regular basis. I guess back to your question on the detail. Once we pick an A or a B, we can get down and get the schematic drawings drawn up and you'll have a detailed estimate to work off of from that point on that's going to help you make the decisions from that point. So we'll probably still try to estimate as much of it as we can. And once we figure out what that number is, if it's above your budget, we'll start figuring out the things to take out of it. Right now, we just need a direction for A or B or you know, kind of what makes sense to you guys. numbers that you had up here, how far were we with option A away from what we're calling our budget? Less than two million, wasn't it? It didn't come in top of anybody's head because we hadn't seen that as an option because of the financing that we were exploring. So um, I was hopeful that that number wasn't going to be quite that high. Brett, thoughts? Refresh my memory on CTE. I heard a couple of different things. Are we getting rid of some? Are we expanding that area? Are we doing uh, it? on option A? Option A or CTE. Right, so I'll forth on that. CTE is new in option A. Okay. It's already in those numbers. What kind of structure is that? All block and board. Uh, yeah, the numbers. Is, is there, we haven't selected the structural system yet. Go ahead, Jay. Yeah, I just said two big terms. Yeah. I think we were talking just yeah. based on the current market condition precast concrete, building the gym, building the CTE, precast, must stay away from the screen. More traditional brace frame construction, but okay. that would give you that CTE, that hardened shell where you could fill it with CTE. Right now, I've got it kind of penciled in as this being a precast box, this being a precast box, and this being a precast box. Where we just fill in the center of the steel, architectural precast cladding on the, on the rest of the building. How much current CTE area do we have? How big is that new box? It is. I think it is bigger. I'm sure it's bigger. It's been long enough. Is 
that intended to just replace what we would be taking up the space of now with woods and metals, or is there additional CTE classrooms and or other parking spaces that we would need to Just, I'm not, I'm not asking for exact spaces, I'm just kind of curious. You know, talking, just replacing what we're taking away, or are we adding to that? Basically, three, uh, yeah, an auto lab, uh, an ag lab, and then a building trades. So each each one of those um, areas that you see in the corner would have a more lecture-based classroom, and then you step outside into the more messy, um, get your hands dirty type. Uh, so uh, so for us, that would be an ag classroom right. that we don't currently have. Or a robotics area. What's that? Or like a robotics. Yes. Something it is with space. 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 Yeah. 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 And I think uh, it's more of the traditional shop space approach now. This is more of the next generation of spaces. Uh, we've got about 8,500, 9,000 square feet in box for CTE. So it's a significant growth. Very nice. Other right. comments, questions? Big comments for adding them. that motion. small one because if you have if you move head start out and you and you absorb two large classrooms and office space plus another four classrooms in addition to the fifth grade movement out that would get you to eleven that would give you some more breakout space uh, that could potentially house yeah, and I think that's what teachers taught that it's more than just classroom like you said it's breakout yeah. space a lot of small group activities they don't have a place to go other than the hallways right now. I mean, is that just going to make that building look atrocious and really not flow or be efficient? Yeah. So the, the I just pulled up the slide that we kind of hit in the background. But this is the elementary school showing a lot of different options for where you could add classrooms. So just, um, multiple areas, um, kind of speaking to uh, the ends of the building. We, we want to study you know, the distance from the advent that but the site down there is pretty flat and the building is set up pretty naturally for an addition. It's just which area, which area of the building. But not all of these were just studying exactly that. We had added um, additional classrooms to support each grade expansion of, of each section. So there is plenty of opportunity now to do that later. The idea in my head was a little bit more of the day when the upper middle school kids is tough. I don't know if all of you are able to bridge that gap. Granted, I'm only one person, but that's, that's just where I'm at. So we have to keep those little down there and put another four spaces on, four rooms on to keep be able to expand in 10, 12, 15 years. I just want to make sure that's good. At least I'm not. Renee, comments? I've expressed all mine. I, I, I like the idea of a standalone building, but I understand the limitations of what we're up against. And, and I, I think it's a good option, <coughs> and especially considering the limited resources. So. I mean, what it doesn't afford us was if it's not going to be, right, we were saying it's going to take careful planning versus a freestanding that's not disruptive to you. So we have them. Oh, go ahead. The, the, the parking area is going to 
that's going over the top of the current practice field. Practice field and bus barn, that would, was that, our bus yard, yeah. is that accounted for in any of those dollar amounts? The bus yard is about the actual building for the bus barn. And the practice field is figured in there too. The practice field really should be pretty normal. You've got good grass up there now. I mean, I think we, honestly, I think we can go up there, oversee it, move the goalposts, I think, and put some irrigation in there. And you get conditioning going on in the practice room. I don't think it's consideration for the board. Luckily, it's MCL and DPH, but Alex's <coughs> point, it, or whoever said it, as far as staging and phasing this thing, where we're cutting that CTE out to utilize that space and then rebuilding that space. There's probably going to have to be consideration of building the space first so we can move stuff over there so we can have class before they start working on cutting that space out so there's a continuation of education. So Brad's not here to talk to us, but what we talked about is trying to get like 90% of this thing built and doing like three sides of this uh, CTE or the gym, leaving the inside bare until we get all this built and then basically at that time be able to occupy a good portion of the school and then we would get, go in there and cut that CTE out do the last wall out of masonry or something like that to finish the gym out. And through that process of just building uh, safe walkways for students to access the current CTE program but then once they move over to the new having the same kind of safety measures put in place to you know, have them cross the construction right? So phasing is definitely the next step in getting the more uh, defined plan ready to the course of construction. So Brandon, I know you've had conversations with the administrators. Anything that we're missing? Anything else you want us to take into consideration before we go on that? Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, one of one of the concerns that we had talked about if, if the standalone building was to take place was neglecting some of the renovation that might be done, need to be done in the middle school, high school. And if we're having to put that off for another 20 years, now all of a sudden it's a 65-year-old building that hasn't really been touched. At that point, <coughs> what you have, you have to start, what does that mean? Um, I, I think the option A was more comfortable for everybody. Now, that being said, option A does not include anything past that red line, the red dot line, is that correct? In terms of wall reconfigurations, correct. The numbers we're looking at tonight. Rem well, any remodeling, I'm, my understanding was other than the, the HVAC, because it says HVAC only there, nothing else was happening on the right side of that red line, is that correct? Right. But with the HVAC renovation, with the cafeteria and kitchen renovation, those were two really big pieces. Okay. I think the one piece that is missing that can probably be addressed in the interim somewhere is kind of that middle school bank where the bathroom, the conference room, the staff lounge, kind of that wall probably needs addressed at some point in time. But everything else okay. is addressed. I just want to make sure we're yep. talking the same way. I mean, I'll speak for MCL, but since the <coughs> easy to make comments. <laughs> since, <laughs> since, since, right. you know, since we are going to not do some of that reno and everything else, maybe some of like the big, the partitions that you can hear through up there while we're ripping out ceilings and putting new mechanics. Oh, yeah. Maybe we can put a sound wall in between those type of things. Or take care of top wall conditions. Yeah, right. I, I accuse of overlooking the school and not doing the right thing. Like we're not Let's take that 500000 and let's do some work in the middle school. Right. Um, so just to clarify, right. we're just approving, let's move forward with design, <coughs> design 
designing option A, getting prices so we can see true detail on and make start making some decisions. Is that accurate? Right. Uh, right. Yeah. I mean, and so when we get to that next step of uh, drawing development, that's what Trevor was trying to do too. Is you're going to see a really comprehensive breakdown of different areas, so you can see that exact level. Why we spend that money doing that? Then we then if we want to flex, put that money to something else. Yeah, Arvid, and I was going to clarify that as well. The motion on the table is to authorize the design, uh, the, the beginning or getting into construction drawings of option A, and but we will have the opportunity to approve the actual construction bids or packages before yep. they would start with any construction, which gives us that alternative of saying, no, not over here, but over here. We're going to have six months of that going to be a quick base of meetings and uh, we could have a special meeting like this plus maybe some time in your regular board meeting. I think we're going to need a couple times a month because there's a lot of ground to cover in the next six or so months yeah. to get there. We'll, we'll get to when would that need to start to be from, from your perspective? So we can be responsive and not go a whole month until you guys get the feedback that you need. Uh, I think your next meeting is the 18th. Two weeks from tonight. Yeah, that's Easter. Okay. We're both taking the Easter vacation. Could we meet the following Monday? And I know we may not all be able to make that work, but I think uh, what, What's the date? Following uh, the 25th, I believe. April 25th. Don't we go to our food this first? Yeah. Let's approve this first. Yeah. All right. <coughs> Let's approve this first. Everybody comfortable with the motion on the table? Understanding what the motion on the table is. All right, Chris, will you call the roll, please? Mike? Yes. Brad? Yes. Laura? Yes. Alex? Yes. Renee? Yes. Rob? Yes. Okay, before we go to the rest of this in scheduling, the next item we need to approve is the contract for PBH. Um, look like you need to say something. We don't have that It's on the agenda. Huh? It's on the agenda. Neither with what we just did specifically. <laughs> That it's it's all it, that's an inclusive agenda in my view. But go that ahead. that contract is still being worked on between legal and BPH. Okay. Uh, we have not seen the draft of the contract. I believe you yeah, guys are working on it. Steve and Renee oh. were still yeah. looking on it to okay. communicate with BPH. Okay. So that's not that contract's not ready to be finalized. Gotcha. All right. We will have it on the agenda for two weeks from tonight. But if we're asking them to go, we need to give them some assurance that their time is going to be compensated for any work that they do to find out. Thank you, yes. I think they do trust us, right? <laughs> it's not trust, but you guys have already been out on the limb since about <laughs> October, right? We're so out on that limb. What's <laughs> another two weeks? We're, we all wanted to be moving forward at this point for a while ago. Yeah. But we know a due process needs to happen. Fair enough, that'll be on our next agenda. Eric, timeline for like HVAC start, how long does that equipment take? Five, so, six? Uh, I mean, the air handler is 30 weeks now, <coughs> 40 weeks, some of them. Electrical gear a little faster, so it, it's really going to be okay, summer. It's going to have to be next summer at this point. I, I mean, we could talk about if there's anything we can do this summer. Yeah. Um, so that it's not an issue. We did. I thought you had mentioned it would be not this summer, but the next yeah, summer. Yeah, it's probably going to last right now. We just can't get equipment any more fast. Yeah. We'll, we'll work with MCL to see if there's any. Anything that we can push out this summer, we'll push out this summer. We're going to go over here. And part of what we talked about at last meeting was the different HVAC options. So we'll, yeah, during schematic design, we'll get those all. That's right. Yeah. 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 I mean, we have some pretty good idea of what we're doing. Cost will play Are we comfortable? Are we available for a meeting on the 25th? A special meeting on the 25th. Yeah. Yeah.
Okay. All right. Anything else from the board? Brandon, anything else? No, I don't think so. MCL, anything else? No. BBH. Thank you. Chairman, good. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? Oh, come on. I don't know what time's the game. <laughs> I'll watch it. I'm waiting for Robert to ask this. At 7.59, I'll wait. <laughs> Alright. I need somebody to make a motion. I'll make a motion. Is there a motion? Is there a second? second? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you, guys. Thanks for working. Thank you. 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 Th